Hey guys, what's up? I'm Noah, this is Analog Resurgence, and today I'm gonna to be taking a look at the basic features of a 35 millimeter SLR film camera. This is my trusted Canon AT1 35 millimeter SLR camera. And today we're gonna to be taking a close look at it in order to understand the kind of basic functions and features that you can expect to find on your own 35 millimeter SLR camera when you're shooting. So shooting in SLR is great and you have access to a variety of lenses and the ability to choose manual control over all of your exposure features. And it's a great step up, especially when you're coming from a point and shoot camera. There are so many SLR cameras out there. Canons, Minotas, Yashikas, Nikon, Pentax. And I'm not going to make any bold claims about my own personal SLR and whether or not the Canon AT1 is going to be perfect for you, but it does offer the basic functions that a normal SLR will have. So I want to use it as a reference so that it can help you guys out there to understand what to expect when you're picking up an SLR of your own. So SLR means single lens reflex. Whenever I'm looking through the viewfinder here, I'm actually seeing out the lens here. Here. See, on cameras like range finders or point and shoot cameras, you're not seeing directly through the lens. You're seeing through a viewfinder that just approximates the view of the lens. This means that when I actually look through the viewfinder on my camera and turn the focus ring on my lens, I can actually see my image go in and out of focus. So reflex, non-reflex. Reflex, non-reflex. Non cool. A major advantage of shooting an SLR camera is being able to take the lens on and off, which means that I can swap it out with different lens options. And there are a huge variety of different lens options out there based on the SLR camera body that I have. Now, of course, different cameras have different lens mounts. And this Canon AT1 will take any Canon FD mount lens. And you can find all that sort of information by just doing the research on your own specific SLR. So for my Canon, I can use things like this 50 millimeter lens, this 28 millimeter lens, or this 135 millimeter lens. So I can really change it up based on what I want to shoot and how I want my images to look. When I have my lens off, I can see inside the camera. And because this is an SLR, it has a mirror in it. The mirror reflects what the lens sees up into the viewfinder for me. Now, whenever I take a picture, this mirror flips up and the shutter opens to expose the film. So always make sure that when your shutter fires in your camera, that this mirror is moving properly. First going up and then coming back down into place. At the front of the AT1, I also have my battery compartment. This camera specifically takes an A544 battery and that powers the entire camera. Now different SLRs will need different batteries and sometimes you'll have the battery compartment on the bottom or even on the side. Now I need to have this battery inside my camera in order for it to fire the shutter and activate the built-in light meter. There are a ton of SLRs out there that only need a battery for the light meter so you can still fire the shutter without one. Cameras like this Canon TLB can be used without a battery inside of it. Now on the other side of the lens, I have this button. This is a stopped down lever. Whenever I look through the viewfinder to compose my image, the lens is wide open to give me the most light and make it easy to see clearly. But when I take the actual picture, the lens will close to whatever aperture I've set on the ring. But pushing this button will allow me to see through the lens with a specific aperture opening. On the top here, I have my power switch. Now, not all SLRs have one of these, but because this is powered entirely by my battery, I have to turn it on to use it. I also have an option to check the battery by moving this to C. Now I know if my battery is working or not by having the switch in this position. Then I look through my viewfinder to see the needle on my light meter move all the way up, which signifies that the battery is healthy and working. This switch is also my film compartment lock. So if I pull this all the way up, then my camera will open up and this is where the film goes. Now I've already taken a look at the basics of properly loading film into an SLR just like this one, but as a refresher, your film goes on this side, travels across where it is exposed here, and is taken up on this side. And then it's rewound all the way back into your film canister. As you advance the film and you fire the shutter, it will open up this curtain here to expose the film. Many SLRs have a shutter curtain like this or something very similar to this. On the door is my pressure plate. It's really important that you have your pressure plate and it's not missing. This keeps the film pressed up against the film plane so it's properly in focus behind the lens. Now all cameras need to be light tight around the film compartment and this area here has your light seals 
which are usually a foamy material to prevent light from seeping into the camera and affecting your film. So if you're getting strange light leaks every time you shoot with a specific camera that you can't understand, then there's a good chance that the light seals on your camera need to be refoamed. There are ways of doing this yourself, or you can seek out a camera shop that will do it for you. Back on top of the camera, there's also a little symbol here, and it represents where exactly your film plane is. So this is exactly where in the body the light is hitting your film. On top of my Canon is the hot shoe flash mount. There are two types of shoes, hot shoe and cold shoe. A hot shoe can trigger flashes without having to plug the cable into the flash socket, which on my camera is right here at the front. It will send a signal through the shoe to the flash and it will fire. On some cameras like this one, there's a cold shoe. This lacks the ability to auto trigger the flash, so you need to actually plug the flash into the terminal on your camera. Here on this side is my shutter button, ISO ring, shutter speed ring, and film advance lever. So this is the button to fire my shutter and take my picture, and I can also attach a cable to it like this. Now my camera also has a lock for the button and a self timer, but not all SLRs do. Some have a timer on the front like this one that you can press down. On some really old cameras, the self timer can actually cause the shutter to jam. So sometimes it's best to just avoid it if your camera is really, really old. This ring turns to let me adjust my shutter speed in the camera and has all the numbers listed on it. 1 60th of a second is my shutter speed for flash sync. And that's represented with a little flash symbol. Now this piece rotates to let me set the ISO or ASA as it can also be called of my film. Now this only works to tell my internal light meter how to meter my film to help me expose it right. If I'm loading 400 ISO film into my camera, then I want to set the light meter to 400 ISO. On top of this is the lever to advance my film after taking my picture. So this will move freely only when the film is ready to be advanced. Never try and force your film advance lever. That's a really good way to break your camera. If it's not advancing and your shutter is not firing, then you might just need a new battery for your camera or the shutter might even be jammed. I also have a little dial here to tell me how many pictures on my roll I've taken. And that will reset whenever I open the film compartment. Inside this viewfinder is where I can set my focus and see my light meter. The light meter is a moving needle that responds to the light. When I match the second indicator with the moving needle by changing either my aperture or shutter speed, then my exposure is good. On the bottom, I have what looks like another battery compartment and some contacts, but these are only used with a film winding accessory that just a lot of cameras could take. I also have my film rewind button. Whenever I want to rewind my film, I have to press this button down first to release the winding mechanism in the camera. Then I can rewind my film with the little handle that flips up here on the top. Remember to always wind in the direction of the arrow because backwinding your film will ruin your images. So those are the basic features that you can find on a 35 millimeter SLR camera when you pick one up to shoot yourself. Mirrors, different buttons and shutter speed options and the ability to advance and then rewind your film, battery compartments, built-in light meters. Now I do love my Canon AT1. I've taken a ton of pictures with it and I've been using it for several years without fail. I can trust the internal light meter. I like the lenses that I have for it. It is a somewhat popular camera and it's great for a lot of beginners who kind of seek it out along with the very similar Canon AE-1, which has some more automatic functions on it as well if you want to use those. So shooting with an SLR is really one of the most common ways of just shooting 35 millimeter and getting into it. And it gives you the ability to learn how to properly load film and control your image properly and understand how exposure works. And I would really recommend using one of these as like a main camera as opposed to always relying on a point and shoot camera because you just learn more in the long run about how to use film when shooting on one of these. Hey, thanks so much for watching and checking this out and I hope that you enjoyed. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe for more analog content every week as I continue to talk about different cameras and film formats and history and gear and just all the stuff that goes along with shooting analog formats. And if you're at all interested in supporting the channel, you can check out the link to the Patreon in the description down below. You can head over there and check that out and see what that's all about. You can get your name in the credits for the videos and some shout outs and just more information and notes that can be really helpful for some of you guys who are just looking for more information on the topics that I cover on the channel. So thanks so much and I'll see you guys soon.